In a previous video, I showed you my new paddleboard, which is the Nux Bumblebee Large Paddleboard, holding the RC600, the TC Helicon Voice Life Play Acoustic, and a couple of extra paddles. Now that's the paddleboard I'm using for my gigs, and I'm really happy with it. And it takes between eight to 10 minutes to set up the whole paddleboard, which is really fast if I'm doing a big gig. But it's not that fast if I'm doing something like a open mic night. I don't know about any other country, but here in the UK, there are a lot of open mic nights. And they're fantastic to showcase your work to new people, or to showcase yourself to the pub landlord if you're looking for a new gig. But eight to 10 minutes to set up a paddleboard for a 10 minute slot isn't ideal, but I do wanna use looping as part of my set. It's part of who I am, it's part of my identity as a live performer to use looping. So the long and short of it is I need a smaller paddleboard, one that's quick to set up, one that's still got my loop paddles on and also doesn't have a lot of weight because I don't wanna be carrying all that stuff around, again, just for a 10 minute slot. Now there's loads of mini paddle boards out there in the world that you can go and buy, but Van Goa have sent me their brand new paddle board that's only just been released and it's this. Now on the outset, it just looks like your normal aluminium pedal board. It's really nice and thin, and that's really cool, but it's actually got some really cool tricks up its sleeve. I'm gonna show you them now. Okay, so let's start with the bag. This is the Van Goa VPPD-S pedal board. I know, it's a strange name, but bear with me. So let's have a look at the bag first of all. The bag reminds me of the mono bags and they're really, really good. It's really high build quality. It's got some feet here and then you've got a strap there for holding, putting around your shoulder and also carrying. What it's also got is a guitar neck strap holder. So you can just put that around your guitar, around the neck, and then it fits onto your guitar bag, which means you're not carrying it, which is really, really cool. Inside is the pedal board and I'm just gonna open it this way round. Now, the first thing you actually come to is a load of Velcro strips because you can put them on the pedal board. They supply them with the pedal board, which is really nice. That's cool. So we've got two Velcro strips there. The next thing is a power supply and a load of cables. So you've guessed it, this pedal board is actually powered and you can power it and I'll get to that in a minute. So we've got the plug and that's fine. And then we've also got a load of little connectors. So there's actually eight of them here, little connectors for connecting your pedals to the pedal board itself. So let's get this out the way. And here is the pedal board itself. It is powered. It's a powered pedal board. It's all built in. The pedal board is 410 millimeters long by 165 millimeters by 50 if you've got the feet out. This is pretty much flat, but it's got these little feet and you put the feet out and that's it. And as you can see here, this is the PS de Resistance. It's actually got eight individual isolated power supplies, nine volt, 100 milliamp each. There's no ground loop between the effects and you can see there's an on off switch here. We've got an in and an out and that's to actually supply the LED lights so you can actually light it up and it actually lights up. It's really, really clever. Now a slight downside for me is I'm in the UK and this is US power supply. So I had to go and pick myself up a UK power supply. But other than that, that's the only real downside. So I've got myself a UK power supply and I'm just gonna plug this in now because I wanna show you you what this does. Let's plug it in and what we do is when we switch it on we've actually got a load of LEDs and as I talk there's a tiny little microphone just here and it just lights up which is really cute and it's really lovely and it's just a nice little showcase piece. Now you can either use the microphone here, there's a little microphone that picks up the sound, or when you've got your paddles on the board, you can plug it into here and it will take the audio from the line in and then go out to the PA. What I love about this is it still remains really nice and thin. And of course the power supply is all here. It doesn't take up any room and you can see here eight, nine volts, 100 milliamp power supply. There's a little gauge here if you wanna change the intensity of the LED lights. So that only works when you've got it plugged in here, not with the microphone, the microphone's independent. Now, just to show you, I have still got it plugged in, but you could probably get five of these, five normal size paddles uh, onto this board. Or obviously, if you've got mini paddles, you could probably get more on here. Now, it does actually have eight inputs on here, so you could have up to eight paddles powered. But if you've got a double pedal like this, it's going to take up almost half the space. These are all loopers. I don't need all of these, but I'm going to show you what my paddle board is going to look like. So just to show you what my thought process is, this is a Sonic Ache. Volwar, this is a volume wah pedal, which is also powered. So you can change it between volume and wah. So it's a wah stroke volume combo pedal. And it's a mini paddle, you can see it from the size of my hand. So that's gonna go there. 
I've already shown you this one in a previous video. This is the Sonic Bar Sonic Wood by Sonic Cake. And it's stage effects for an acoustic guitar where you can plug in and out. And again, it's powered. You can actually go XLR out if you want to, but we're just gonna use Jack for today. So we've got a reverb, a delay, a chorus, and a preamp, and that's great. So we're gonna put that right in the middle. It's actually a really thin pedal, so we can actually put that there. And then my looper of choice for this one, just to keep it nice and simple, is the Boss RC5. This is a 32-bit floating. It's got loads of record time. We've got two ins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the guitar in on one and then a vocal mic with an XLR to jack on the other. Then with the outs, it's gonna keep it all in mono because that way one is guitar and one is vocal. And then we can send that out to the PA and that is just gonna sit nicely there. Now, while you watch a time lapse of me putting this paddleboard together and playing far too much with sticky tape on the dual lock, I'm going to talk about today's sponsor today, which is DistroKid. Hang on. That's better. DistroKid, a music distribution company, and if you've got songs you want to put them out there in the world, DistroKid can help. You upload your songs to DistroKid and they push the songs out to all the online stores and digital streaming sites around the world, including places like Apple Music, Spotify, Amazon Music, Tidal, Deezer, and so many more. They also push it out to social media sites like TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram, so you and other people can use your music on reels and stories. And guess what? You get paid for that. Now, most music distributors charge you per release, whether that's a single, an EP, an album, an acoustic version, a live performance album, it gets really pricey. DistroKid don't do that. They charge you one price per year, and it starts at $19.99. They also have a couple of tiers. They have Musicians Plus, which is what I'm on. It gives you two different outfits. So I've got me as John Paul, I've got another outfit, which is Tokyo Wasteland, which is synthwave music. If you wanna have a listen to me singing, to synthwave music and the other tier district could have is a label tier so if you're someone who's got a couple of different outfits or you're actually looking after musicians and you want to run your own label district kid can help you with the output of that as well now the other thing district kid have done is they've released a new arm of district kid called distro vid and this is where you can upload your music videos this is what i've done and i've got my first music video and my next single coming out on friday the 7th of october so it should be out by the time you've watched this i did a video about how to create your own music video sponsored by district Vid and then releasing it with Distro Kid. Kind of makes sense. Distro Vid is $99 for the entire year and you can release as much music videos as you want. Now, Distro Vid will push the music video out to places like Apple Music and Tidal for the music video side, but the big one here is you also get your own Vivo channel on YouTube. All the royalties you keep because you've paid Distro Kid and Distro Vid and they will actually get all the royalties for you. And they have some amazing things for the Distro Kid side, things like splitting up the royalties if you're in a band of five and you want to split it five ways. They've got promo cards, they've got hyper follow pages, which I think are incredible. And it's all together in one place for you to organize and distribute your music and also your music videos. Now we've got a link that's on the screen. It's also in the description box below. So if you give that link a click, then you're going to get 7% off your first annual membership with Distro Kid. That helps the channel and it helps me, but it's at no extra cost to you. In fact, it's saving you money. And at $19.99, for me, it's around about 16 pounds to release as much music as you you want for an entire year for an independent musician it's never been a better time to release music so thank you very much to distro kid and distro vid for sponsoring this video give the link a click and start distributing your music today now let's start having a look at the pros and the cons of this pedal board so here we are everything's in nice and easy and we can see there we've got all our connections in and i can plug the output of the looper to the input of here to control these LED lights. I might not do that. I might just use the microphone that's built in. And if we just have a look underneath, you can see how incredibly tidy it is. And I really like that. There's even here, we could put cables underneath there if you needed to, if you had longer cables. But we don't need to because these short cables come with it. If you wanted to run the pedal board flat, you can do. You can put these feet down and then you've just got feet on the floor here as well.
So the positives, it's nice and small. It's made from aerospace grade aluminum or aluminum, depending on where you're from. It can hold five normal size paddles or up to eight paddles in total. If you've got like miniature paddles or small paddles, it's nice and small when it's in the bag and nice and flat too, because it's got those feet that fold in. The power supply and all the little cables for powering it are included. And you've got that light show at the front of it, which just gives a bit more energy to your performance. I really like the bag as well. The bag can actually fit onto the neck of a guitar, which means it keeps your hands free and it's not too heavy. It's got a nice little mesh area inside the bag if you want to keep things like cables or plex or small items and overall it's a really high quality build in both the bag and the paddleboard and it just looks a little bit different but there are two downsides and the big one for me is the fact that they ship it at the moment with just a US plug. Now if you're in the US it's fine or if you've got an adapter to go for that it's no problem at all but if you're going to have a lot of paddles on there it could generate a lot of power. So if you're anywhere else in the world other than the US you're going to have to find yourself a plug. I bought a plug on Amazon and it works perfectly fine I'll link that in the description box as well and the second thing is they supply normal velcro. Normal velcro for me is a big no-no and I really don't like it. Normal Velcro gets old and it gets furry and it doesn't work very well if you're taking paddles off and on again. And then you've got to take that Velcro off the pedal it can get messy. If you're going to use some kind of hook and loop system, I would actually prefer the dual lock, the 3M dual lock system, because that's just a lot more sturdy and it doesn't wear as much and it locks in so it's much more secure and it's stronger and that's what I've got on my main pedal board. Apart from the plug and the normal Velcro, which you can replace yourself, the VPPDS, sorry, hyphen S, please come up with a better name, Van Gogh, has all these great features, has this really lovely bag and comes in at $109. Think about all the different manufacturers manufacturers out there who are just supplying a pedal board, just a bit of aluminium. And then you've got to find power adapters on top of that and all the little pieces of kit that go with it. And if you want an LED strip to go on top of that as well, this has got one built in. And it actually works to the volume of your music actually plugging in your pedals or the microphone that's built into it as well. I think it's a really unique look on a pedal board and it's the pedal board I'm going to be using when I take it out to places like open mic nights or if I'm just going to take it out and do maybe a 20 minute half hour gig. Now everything that's on the pedal board, I'm going to have links in the description box as well as the pedal board itself and also that adapter if you need it if you're not in the US. Now if you want to see my full pedal board with the RC600 and everything that's on board it have a look at this video and I'll take you through the Nux Bumblebee large pedal board.